Hey there, Caitlin. It is Monday, the 16th of April, and uh, 2018, and we are on Psalm 20. Uh, let me pray, and then we'll get to it. Oh my God, is it? Yeah, okay. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for another day, and Lord, we come to Psalm 20, and we need your Holy Spirit to guide us to see what your word is saying. So please give me discernment and and wisdom, and all this would bring you glory in the name of your Son, the one true Christ, Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, Caitlin, Psalm 20, I'm struggling a little bit with with this psalm. I think what I will do is focus on 6. Verse 6, it says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, may the king answer us when we call. Okay, well, and the reason I, I struggle with this a little bit is because I see I see this pointing to to Jesus, and I'm not really sure how, because it, it, there's like a dual thing going on here. When they, when David is speaking about his anointed, the, the anointed, see, there was, the, the king of Israel was anointed by God, but the anointed also points to the future when Christ would, would come on earth the, the first time. And he was, uh, you know, enters Jerusalem and becomes the, the, the lamb, the sacrifice to pay the sin debt. And so I think this is pointing to Christ. So I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but I think this is pointing to Jesus that, boy, and I, I don't really, I don't really know how. I, I, I just know these, these Psalms point to Christ and that Jesus is ultimately the anointed. He was fully God, fully man. And some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. You know, some people trust in things. But those who are in Christ remember the name of the Lord our God. And so those who trust in things and created things, they have bowed down and fallen. But those who trust in the name of the Lord, those who trust in Christ, have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. So, <laughs> so Caitlin, this is this is deep water. It seems so simple. The Psalm 20. You know, I, I'm, I imagine, you know, I've read it before and just kind of okay, yeah, let's do this, and but. When we start thinking about who this anointed is, then it becomes, then it becomes like, wow, this is this is very, this is very deep. And in uh, verse three, we have uh, the word selah, which I believe means pause or consider. Some have said, I'm sure if they said peace, but anyway. So that Selah means to stop and consider. So we're not, the psalm, it's very easy just to read a psalm and just fly through it and say, yeah, I know what this is. Okay, blah, blah, blah. But we're supposed to stop and consider what is really being said. So I, I encourage you 
to go to Psalm 20 and look at this for yourself because uh, well I'm looking at Psalm, uh, verse 4 may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill fulfill all your purpose see now our heart is is wicked you know we we have you start following your heart's desire you're going to do some awful things but see Jesus his heart's desire was the will of the father and so he had a pure heart's desire and to fulfill all his purpose well his purpose was the salvation of mankind through his sacrifice and so see that's what we're we're david is praying this it's 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 really just amazing so we we will rejoice in your salvation so we will rejoice And I think David's talking about salvation, you know, from his enemies and all that. But also, we <laughs> ultimately we rejoice in the salvation of Jesus. And so, how do we bring that here to 2018? I would say, remember the name of the Lord our God. And... The name of the Lord our God is, uh, a name is so important because the name is like who you are and what you stand for. And so it's kind of like, like these corporations, they want to make a name for themselves like Subway. We have an excellent Subway in Ada and it's called Subway, and when you want a fantastic sub, <laughs> you go to Subway in Ada, and I mean, man, we, I tell you what, it's, it's top notch. This is like, our Subway is, is top notch. So when you remember the name of Subway in Ada, you're thinking, uh, you know, this is great sub, this is quality, good service, all these things, and there's, um, so the name is so important. So when we remember the name of the Lord, our God, the one true God, we think of all the things he represents, that he's completely good, he's all powerful, he's holy, which means he's completely separate from anything in the universe. There is only one God. And so he is completely holy, completely separate, he is absolutely good. Actually, he's the only source of good. He is the creator. He is the sustainer. And we remember the name. See? Remember the name. And we don't trust in things. Chariots, those represent things made by man. Horses, you know, those are created things. But we don't trust in that we trust in the name of the Lord our God and those who trust in the lesser things they will fall but those who trust in the name of the Lord our God will rise and stand upright and that is referring to not only now because now there are things that knock us down and, and yes but ultimately since Christ rose from the dead, we who are in Christ also will raise. Well, I hope that, I hope I did that uh, right. That's, like I say, these Psalms, uh, Caitlin, I, I just, I put them on my screen, I, I scan it really quick, and then I push record. So, <laughs> this is not after intensive study, so I encourage you to go to the Psalm, Psalm 20 yourself. And for anyone else who happens to be watching this video, I encourage you to remember the name of the Lord. And, and, and what that means is to be in Christ is to confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. This is Romans 10, 9, 10. 
you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, that means that he is the, the he is he is God. He is he is Lord. He is he is fully in charge. And that confessing means that we are submitting then to the Lordship of Christ. And then believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are believing that what Christ did on the cross was enough to pay the sin debt. That there's nothing we can do on our own. And we repent of our sins. We say, to the Lord, I, you know, there's nothing I can do to save myself. I need Jesus, and I believe you rose him from you. He was raised from the dead, and that proved that his sacrifice was enough. And then, ultimately, what this is pointing to is the return. And so Jesus is going to return. We are not waiting for him to come as another sacrifice. We're waiting for the conquering king. Well, man, it's been 11 minutes already. <laughs> I need to get to my Monday. I'm going to pray one more time, Caitlin, and then I will get to work. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word. And I pray over anyone who's watching this that they will go to the Psalm 20 and go there themselves and, and read this Psalm and ask you to, to open your word to them. And so uh, we ask this in the name of Jesus and we ask this in the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Talk to you later, Caitlin.